submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society. Oh, joy! Let's rock! On your mark. Get set. Oh, here it goes! They were pitched for the Nicktoons. There were eight Nicktoons pitched total, and only three of them obviously were picked. I was not prepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just used to the ones that everyone talks about, not the, not the lesser-known ones, but then again... I mean, that's why we're doing a podcast that's like covering all the corners of Nickelodeon that no one else dares go. Nickelodeon was on the verge of buying the Hanna-Barbera rights, but they were about to buy all the others, and they also had the rights to play Looney Tunes, which they had done for a long time. And at that time, nobody was playing Looney Tunes. Nobody wanted it. And Nickelodeon... That seems unheard of to me. So Nickelodeon mm. kind of, well there's no kind of, they did put Looney Tunes back on the map especially with the really, really clever advertising. So they said back in the late 80s, initially they paid $3 million. When it got so popular, they jacked it up to $9 million. I guess that's just a matter of supply and demand. Like, Yeah. Everybody knows the bacon on a trash can or Killer Tofu. Those two <laughs> songs though are not my favorite songs. Interesting. Uh, of mine. Do you have a reason why? No, no, just I had another one I liked more than those two. I, I really love Shout Your Lungs Out. Ooh, that's a fun and one. Very high energy. I think that's I think that's why. I, I cuz now as an adult, I'm I'm a, I'm a huge rock and roll fan. It's like the it's like the perfect song to listen to while you're speeding down the highway. Yes. You got to roll your windows down. You got to rock your socks. You got to roll your soul. That's a vocal cords. You got to lose, lose control. control. <laughs> And at the same time, now, when you did go to the wall of stuff, you had, what, how many doors, if I remember? 20, 20 I think. Pick a number, whatever is behind the door, it's your prize. You had, you even had those, your little surprises. Yep. If I remember Pick. correctly, they also did cards that would often send yep. the participants exactly. to, like, the pie wash, yep. pie coaster, pie pot, and all that. Also, sometimes they have what they call the flinch bucket. If by any chance you were to flinch, they'll pull the bucket down and it had like this big gap, like pink yep, or it, orange, it, whatever. It's the same the uh, pink slime yep. from the crowning, crowning glory, actually. Yes. Yep, the yep. flinch bucket. No, if you <laughs> ever avoid pie in the oh presence my. of... You'll just get more of it. <laughs> yep. You are absolutely getting punished with a whole lot more pie. It, it makes me wonder how different your characters would be if they simply switch shows. Like if Kevin was on 15 or Brooke was on Welcome Freshman, how the dynamic would change with the rest of we the cast. We actually talked about that. We were hoping they were going to do that. We were trying to kind of pitch it. But no. Ooh, see if, like we get, see if we can get that worked out. That would be yeah, some kind of crossover. Like that would be sick. I think you would probably get along with Dylan, the rebel. Oh, yeah, maybe. maybe, maybe yeah. Like they could brood that. together. My favorite episode would probably be, I believe it's called Technology from season one of Welcome Freshman. And there was one where like everyone got purple lips due to frozen yogurt that I remember from my early yeah. childhood. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do. I that, remember that so, one yeah. really stood out to me. Yeah. Um, I don't yeah, know yeah. the name of it, but that was like my earliest memory of Welcome uh, Freshman. Lipdromeda, maybe? Lipdromeda. Yeah. And then for uh, 15, I would probably say either the Dislocated Swede or the Party from season one, because I'm kind of a sucker for earlier episodes of any series. Think how different it was back then when the immigrant coming to school was a Swedish person. Like, that's <laughs> really that weird. Was that was a big deal. You have a sweet. Got to be careful with those sweets, you, you know. Yeah, be careful yeah. with those sweets. They will come in and bring all kinds of complex furniture. You have no idea, right? I didn't have Richard Scary anywhere on my list, so I will oh. I will weigh in on on this one. A theme you're going to notice with me as far as Nick Jr. goes mm -hmm. was that as a kid, anything that came out from like 92 and on, I was no longer the demographic that Nick Jr. was aimed toward and Got you. I'd be off school for election day or president's day. One of those holidays that the parents had to go to work, but the kids didn't. And then I'd be sitting there with Price is Right or Bob Ross. Once those were gone, it was, you've got to watch Nick Jr. Because that's all that was on, or you're watching a soap opera. I just felt like I was being talked down to, and it frustrated me. As an older kid, even yeah. though I was older, I didn't understand that, oh yeah, this isn't for my group. This is for kids who are much smaller than me. But uh, a theme you'll notice is as a kid, it frustrated me. And then I grew up 
and then realized what they were actually doing and right. and it's not made for me and right. now as a, a parent i appreciate it far more than i did as a kid the uh the prize that, you know for second place i think they showed you know the commercial comes on and it's like oh and they get up you know these cool clothes it's like some stupid clothes it's like I'm yeah. Not wearing that, you know? yeah but yeah we didn't, even, we didn't even get that prize i got a karaoke <laughs> machine what I, wow yeah, that's like didn't even get the prize that they uh that, <laughs> oh that they my said. gosh which, so much um, for a false advertising. I was I thought you were going to get like a warehouse case of nerds after doing that. <laughs> no, no. They said, I think we were supposed to get clothing or something like that. And then, but we got, they gave us karaoke machines. So we had these like decent karaoke machines that me and my buddy Dave just recorded prank calls with. So we like. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> when I say this quote, does this ring a bell for any of you? Fix me. Oh yeah. Yes. I think, I think, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. It's none other than the big Frank toy, which is basically. Exactly a Halloween version of Operation, but in yep. like a 3D sculpted Frankenstein, it's really cool because when you open it up, there's like all these turning gears and springs and like moving spiders and stuff. Never ended up getting it, but I really love watching the commercial in the hopes that my mom could take me to Toy Works to get it for like some sort of reason, like, oh, I saved my allowance or I was a good boy today. Yeah, that was one that I was wanting as well, but my mom was very against monsters and halloween we we don't do halloween in our house but we still did trick-or-treating she didn't like to go buy monster toys so and I, that one looked like so much fun pretty good production values for a 90s commercial for a toy yeah they used to put in so much more effort back then you know, <laughs> they build a whole set and everything out <laughs> yeah yeah now just press the special effects button and hope it sells something <laughs> Oh my What's God. Uh, DJ got? Wow. Is that, are you afraid of the dark picture? That's proof. That's yeah, proof. Wow. Yeah, that was, All Midnight Society uh, members uh, are looking 90s fly at Universal Studios. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you afraid of the dark episode? Like the handler from Nickelodeon that knew Orlando really well? You need to tell that story because that guy was insane. That was that was like, remember that guy do you remember yeah he was our driver he almost killed yeah, us he, he almost crazy. got us killed i don't know and i'm not even yeah. kidding like his driving even at that age was, and i couldn't <laughs> even drive yet i knew it was horrible like he went didn't he drive over a medium at one point he drove us yeah. in a parking lot or something he almost killed us several times that was really scary that you okay <laughs> see that i remember clearly okay. yeah, it's go. all coming back now go. it's all coming back yeah, yeah. Wow, the memory on Jason. Wow, that's impressive. Oh, no, Daniel, I have pictures. I'll send you the pictures. I, I think can't I wait. Stuff, man. I gotta find out. But yeah, I, I made you dress up in the in the in the thing. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's it's amazing to see whenever slow and steady wins the race, because a lot of times you see players who want to rush, and then they are easily stumped. So even a slow and steady pace can work in your favor as long as you include steady this was a team victory and they got out with one second left which was pretty damn awesome you know galileo's cannonball is an incredible run and to see it as early as episode three really sets the tone for what could happen in the series when a team with unrelenting determination succeeds ironically the team won a telescope for retrieving the artifact here go figure yeah there's there is no victory that is nearly as awesome to experience as those nail biters where that's just one second left on the clock da, 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 da. <laughs> hey, I thought we left you back in the Nick Jr. episode <laughs> <laughs> So when working on Nick's Thanksgiving Fest, here's what Vanessa Coffey have to say. After working at Marvel Productions and on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I decided to move to New York City. I didn't want to do animation anymore because that's basically toy-driven properties. And that's not what I wanted to do. I had never even heard of Nick. I was without work and somebody mentioned Nick to me and I said, I don't do animation anymore. But I went in anyway and I met with Debbie Beast and told her of my experience. I had quite a bit of it. And she said, we're kind of interested in getting into some animation. I met with Herb Scannell, who said, we really can't afford to do animation right now, but why don't you do a special for us while we're figuring this out? So I did the Thanksgiving special in 1989 as an independent producer at the time. And this was on decider.com. And for anybody mm -hmm. who is aware of the book Slimed, there's a whole segment on decider.com that's about the creation of Nicktoons from many of the creators. And the reason he put it there was because there was too much in the book. So this is kind of a, a bonus content thing. Hey, hey, I know you. Don't freak out. I'm I'm a fan, but please don't freak out. We want to connect with you and do some cool stuff. Well, you are very welcome. I'm glad to be here. I am going to share my screen. Wait. Oh, there she is. 
That's me. They apparently like that one more than you. <laughs> what the hell was that? What the hell was that? That was oh suggestive. Oh. <laughs> that were this is just full of surprises. This is from the '90s, and when she showed it, uh, forget. It. And it's it's the Mastodon and everything. Like, yeah, it's fantastic. That's awesome. I do have to say that I own the White Ranger version that I actually got for Christmas, and I remember being like so blown away that no one else had it in school, and I brought it with me to second grade to show it off, like to all my Power Ranger friends. Like, wow, that's so cool. No one else has that one. And then, as a stroke of bad fortune, <laughs> I was playing with oh, no. it in the bathroom, and his cool gold vest separated. Oh, I didn't no. know it separated. And I accidentally flushed it down the toilet. So oh, no. now I had, I had a plain white, white ranger figure. And when I showed it to my friends next time, you know, I went to school, they're like, something feels off about him. Why is he naked? <laughs> What's this? He looks naked. I think oh, it, it was authentic. I think some of my soul just left my body. Yeah, <laughs> I, I did not know better. I flushed many toys down the toilet by accident as a kid. And then for some reason, he just, because of that one instance, like that one moment, uh, Frank feels like his career is over. So he just kind of sits down on the curb to re reflect on his life. So yeah, this, was, uh, this goes back to the point I was trying to make with the PO'd statement. Like you're surprised to hear PO'd. I'm surprised to see somebody smoking on a children's show. It makes sense like for the story because his New Year's resolution is he wants to quit smoking, which he, he clearly can't do. Yeah. Like, None of the adults can do the things that they said they're going to do for their New Year's resolution, which, you know, we can go, which we'll talk about on the moral, maybe perhaps of this, but it's, it's jarring to see that on any children's TV show. You're going to smoke? Yes. The fire warning is up. You were just too perfect, aren't you? Think back to the way things were back in the 90s. Everybody was smoking. Yeah. There were smoking sections in restaurants. It, it was yeah. like having a peeing section in the pool. It's just not going to work. <laughs> Something I want to tell people because people like to come up to me like they got a scoop. Did you know <laughs> that there was another host before you? I'm like, no. Did you know that all TV shows do a pilot to test the concept? Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, the thing that was really cool too. I mean, first of all, the Jerry Labor and uh, I, I cannot begin to talk about what an amazing vision that she had. And then the other thing that the network in general did was they found other people who shared the vision. I've got a vision to do something really crazy and cool for kids, but don't like just repeat what I'm doing, come in with, follow the idea of something crazy, kooky and original for kids. And what does that look like for you? Well, somebody goes, well, for me, that's, that's double there. For somebody else that goes guts. For somebody else, they go Ren and Stimpy. For somebody else, that's Rugrats. All of these things are different, but they fit that sort of umbrella theme and that's, why I think 90s Nickelodeon worked. Excuse me, I belt. Did that? Did you hear no, that? No, we didn't hear nope, that. Didn't hear it. Did you <laughs> smell well, it though? Well, Cause I tasted it. <laughs> <laughs> what did it taste like? Nacho cheese? <laughs> I, no, I, I, had, I, had, I had salmon for lunch. So it tastes mm. like fish. <laughs> Blackboard the pirate brain fish. There you have it. <laughs> it's fresh horrific. <laughs> I should be sucking up on a smooch alien right now. <laughs> <laughs> Will you pull the slime tank lever, please, and send us out? Aye, aye, co captain. Watch you later, retro gamers and Nick Arcade fans. Reprise the theme song and roll the credits. Hard to believe, folks, but it's time to say goodbye. I declare this meeting of the Midnight Society closed. Oh, bye bye.